And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. Today is another beautiful day, the day before FOMC. And boy, do we have a lot to talk about uh, when it comes to cryptocurrency prices and the markets. Typically, what happens is a lot of traders will go neutral going into that event, meaning that uh, no positions on because well, uh, you don't know if you're going to get a wild card out of the Fed. However, the Fed has been more transparent and trying to kind of do what they said they're going to do. And they need to restore confidence in the Fed. I believe everybody has lost a bit of a confidence, um, a bit of their confidence in Mr. Powell as uh, inflation is running rampant. And he was talking about a soft landing and all this garbage in the beginning of the year. And now... Um, you know, frankly, it's just none of it's coming true. So let's got to get on into some Bitcoin price action. And the first thing I'm going to bring up here is the two day time frame. And why is that? Well, we've been talking about it for some time. And we did get the cross down here two days ago. Um, we will cross down again here as long as Bitcoin stays below 20,300. And we are getting the volatility expansion. Uh, we are not quite over 20% yet, but that will say, uh, we'll put a little marker in here for the 20 percentile read. And that would be full, uh, meaning the uh, signal is in its full effect. I do imagine we get that over the next, oh, two days, uh, probably. And what does that mean? So what is this signal produced in the last couple of uh, low volatility reads as we began to expand? And really it's, the cross has been good enough to get the move, especially in this downtrend. So if we just take the move from the last cross here, um, that move was down 21%. Uh, the last cross down here, this cross down was 42%. And this cross down was 43%. Uh, let's take a look at another cross down. Oh, we had this one, which when it didn't produce much. Uh, this one got it even better as volatility was low. The difference between this cross down and this cross down was where the volatility was at. So volatility was at a high telling us, hey, probably the move was not going to be as big. But when volatility is low, it begins to expand above the 20 percentile, which is this line right here. The move is in effect and uh, let's just see that move was 37%. So I think if you go back and continue to back test this uh, low volatility and the stochastics are just going to get the direction of the trend. Um, and the, you know, the idea is that when volatility expands, you would expect the price to go in the direction of the trend. So if you do want to set up TradingView and start to learn how to get some of these signals, we have a free link in the description below. You can set up TradingView for free. You can always sign up. I think it's $20 a year for the first package and uh, get you know a few more indicators. But the average move is about 32%. And if we take 32% down from the cross and volatility expansion, which would be I'd say from this guy right here, 32% down. Can we even get down that much? So 32% gets us down to about 13.5. Now, um, what else do I believe is going on here? Uh, well, you got the five day time frame producing the same signal and volatility is already expanding. We are across to the downside. We got another two days and four hours until the next closure. And we will remain crossed down as long as we are below 20,100. So this move is already in place. And the average move on this guy is about 45%. Now from the cross, I want to take it from volatility expansion. We got a bit of a fake out here, um, but we still remained crossed down. And um, so above 20 percentile, we are expanding. 
Let's take 45% from this guy right here and see where it lands us. Um, so 45%, that's 48%. If we take 45% from that level or 42% from this level where volatility just began to expand, that gets you down to about 11.5. And um, why do I have this green box down here? Well, it's real simple. I believe in the fibs. And the fibs tend to give you a very, oh, I wanna do the weekly chart, excuse me. Based on closures and where does that line up? That fib is coming in right there at 10,500. Um, so not only does that line up with a few other things, um, but there's just major confluences across the board for Bitcoin's price to head down and make a major low. And I do suspect if Powell comes out with a 100 basis point rate hike tomorrow, um, the markets are going to bleed out and it's going to be a bit of a bloodbath for stocks and for crypto. Uh, we had a bit of a recovery in the stock market towards the end of the day. Um, and that's typical on these days before the Fed meeting, um, as you know, people are gearing up. I mean, the market's just trying to fake everybody out. And if he comes out with a half a basis point rate hike, then I'd say we probably get a decent sized bounce. But if anything, I, I believe that would be just a interpretation of the market. So these Fed meetings, what's to be clear is that What's important about a Fed meeting is this, is the expectation going in and then the reality of what happens after and then how the market interprets it. So what's the expectation? 80% of analysts are expecting a 75 basis point rate hike, which is exactly what F Powell said back at the Jackson Hole meeting, right? 75 basis points due tomorrow. We'll get that meeting at 11 a.m. I believe it's 11 a.m. Eastern time. Don't quote me on that, but that would be around 9 a. Sorry, that would be around 8 a.m. Let's let's just Google it. When is the FOMC meeting tomorrow? Oh, there's the Federal Reserve Board calendar, the FOMC meeting. What does FOMC mean? That means Federal Open Market Committee. And what will they be going over? It is the um, the 14th. What's tomorrow? Tomorrow's the 21st. Ah, there it is, 2 p.m. So it is going to be at 11 a.m. Pacific time. A two-day meeting starting, uh, I guess it started today, with selected interest rates at 4.15 p.m. I wonder if we could watch that. Anyways, that's besides the fact Um if they did a half a basis point, I imagine the market would bounce initially and then go for the retrace. And why is that? Well, I think people would realize that one, Jerome Powell is not doing enough to fight inflation. So that ultimately will lead to more inflation, which would be bad for the markets. It's almost like the market could bounce if he does what he said he's going to do. Some are saying it's already priced in. I don't believe so. Um, I don't think that the market, because the average Joe is just not even following this stuff. They, they don't even know what the FOMC meeting is. They don't even know their stocks are down that much, right? I mean, from the high on the NASDAQ, which not everybody's in the NASDAQ, but we're down 29%. The Dow Jones getting beat up pretty bad today. Closing on a down note, Dow Jones is from the high to the low only down 16%. So the pain has not been felt yet. We've gone over this time and time again. And uh, 
I believe the rate hike is going to be kind of one one of the nails in the uh, the coffin, uh, in a sense. Not saying we can't get a little bounce, but um, back on to the five day time frame, which we just discussed. This move is in effect. Volatility is expanding. Stokes are crossed down, and let's check out CMEs, which. The CMEs, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, volatility is expanding on the five day above 20%. And we are crossed down. Again, this cross down happened right here, just enough to give everybody that one last liquidation, right? Um, and now we are going to be <laughs> closing this one down as long as Bitcoin closes here today in the next 34 minutes. Below 20,309, and I do believe that is highly, highly likely, and we'll have multiple closures to the downside, volatility expanding, and that move will be in place, and 42% down from expansion would be probably from this guy right here, actually from here, so 42%. Yeah, that takes us down right around this guy here at 11.5. 11.5 and, um, yep. And so somebody asked in the comments below yesterday, well, when do you expect a bottom to come in? And I said, look, I don't have a crystal ball here. I'm just using some basic TA to kind of judge uh, on where things could potentially bottom. And what we see here, I'm just gonna line this up one more time for you guys because I think it is pretty darn beautiful to uh, check this out. So you, on the weekly time frame from the top, you got 11 bars down, nine bars up, 11 bars down, nine bars up. Feel free to count them out yourself. Oh, you'll have to open a TradingView account which is free. You can do it by clicking in the link in the description below. Um, it's really simple to set up. It takes about 30 minutes. But if we count 11 bars down, that puts us down to October 24th. Um, and perhaps we bottom somewhere in that green box. And then we should be looking for a bounce from that point. Um, I think we could get a significant bounce uh, kind of a false bottom in a sense where, look, this market is not going to just heal itself overnight. That was a 42% bounce from the low. And that was a 40% bounce. What would a 40% bounce look like on this one? That would take us up to call it 15,000 bucks. So perhaps this is the next low, October 24th. This is the next high. December 26. And I do think that lines up for a nice little Christmas rally for Bitcoin. I did want to touch on a few other coins because, well, the Ethereum emerged. I guess it was a buy the rumor, sell the news type of event. We've been talking about that for some time. And one other thing that I did want to bring up, I guess this will line up on a log scale a little bit better here. Um, but using the same Fibonacci retracement, I hate to even do it from here to there, right? Uh, but let's see what kind of targets we can come up with based off of this from the candle body to the candle body. Well, that was a 52% run up. Um, I do believe these altcoins are going to do whatever Bitcoin does, but more in a sense. And what would that look like? with our fibs. So let's do these bodies to these bodies. Okay, that's not the one I wanted. Here we go. There we go. Ooh. That would put Ethereum at 100 bucks and a full retrace to the COVID lows. I do think um, that would be the greatest buying opportunity we've seen in a long time. Again, not financial advice, not a financial advisor, but I'm sure everybody would love to pick up some Ethereum down. Down at about 78 bucks there. That's that's a big merge for you right there at 110. Yeah, that's that's coming in at, excuse me, $88. I'm just going to mark that off as kind of my worst case scenario for Ethereum. 
let's get a more exact number here. What was the COVID low? Gosh, had anybody bought? I didn't buy it at 90 bucks. I tell you what. But um, that's the full retrace. And Charles Dow, the guy they named the Dow Jones after him, was very famous for talking about 50% retracements and 100% retracements and basically the natural having and um, so what is a kind of 100% retracement look like? Well, that's, let's, let's go with a 50% first. So from here to here, let's go fib this out. This is known as a bullish retracement. So you have a huge run up, call it a, what is that? A 40 X from a hundred. Yeah. Bitcoin runs from a hundred to 40,000 bucks or four thousand dollars that was a 40x congratulations if you participated in that we did here at bitcoin advisors and then you have a 50 percent retracement which is down you know close enough is close enough that would be the 50 percent on the fib and then what do you get well you get a hundred percent retracement which is going to be this guy right here so we came down this much and up this much right 100% retracement. And what else did we do? From this low to there, uh, excuse me, from this high to this low, I, I'm willing to bet that's another 50%. Notice how this TA stuff uh, tends to work out. Okay, so this was more of the, uh the 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 two-thirds kind of uh theory right here and that's also what he talked about is the 618 fib which is this guy right here um it almost had a let's see i'm going to measure it out from the high to the low so that was 34 percent so a third down needless to say down what looks like about 50 percent so from this low to this high, 129%. I don't know why my math is. 1,700 to 3,900 down to 2,650. So for round numbers, let's say this was 1,500, runs up to 3,000. So it runs up 1500 and then down, you know, almost half that, that looks like half to me close enough is close enough. Anyways, um, we had more than a hundred percent retracement. In fact, it went up another hundred and then what do we do? Another hundred, hundred percent retracement from this low to this high, a little bit more than a hundred percent. And now would be the full retrace which is from this low to this high and then back to this low. And uh, this could be seen as a massive head and shoulders as well. I mean, it looks like to me, right? Here is, I'm gonna draw them out for you. Here is the head, might call that a double head, right? And here is your shoulder and your shoulder and how do you measure these moves? And you wonder how these trend lines all come in place here. But look at this, right? That's how you measure the shoulder line. So as long as Ethereum doesn't break back above 2600, this move will be in effect. And you can see, you typically measure from the top of the head. If we measure from the the neckline, which is coming in right here. Whoa, that puts us way down, way, way, way down. I don't know if we can go to negative 500 bucks, but um, maybe I should use log scale. These things, uh, you know, and again, I'm not a rocket scientist here. I don't have uh, all the answers, but what I do know is that these these type of moves tend to work out 
over time. I'm going to delete this and redraw it. And so something to be keeping in the back of your mind here, guys, is look, if Ethereum and Bitcoin get smashed like this, that looks a little bit better, right? Down to 777. I already got that one marked off. And what does that line up from? Probably that last retracement right there. Look at the confluence right there with those levels. And that again. There's a 190 target right there. So you can mess around whether it's log scale. Uh, but yeah, the measure move here in effect, as long as we're below the neckline and 795s in the cards, I don't think we'll stop there. That's kind of no man's man. Oh, it's right up at this high right here at 790. So it could get a nice little bounce right there. All right, I'm jibber jabbering and I'm gonna get into the news piece of today. So, all right. And I'll just go over invalidation. So invalidation for Ethereum would be any kind of a weekly closure back above 2000 bucks. Uh, for Bitcoin, how do we know this trade idea is kind of over? Any kind of a weekly closure back above 25,000, I would say. All these ideas would be invalidated as long as we are closing below there. And this would be your first warning sign, a weekly closure back above 23,000. But really, that green box is going to be the area to be keeping an eye on and looking for invalidations. Okay, that's it for Ethereum and Bitcoin. Let's jump into the news. So, crypto news today. CFTC commissioner visits Ripple offices as decision in SEC case loom. So the outcome of the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit could influence whether the CFTC or SEC will play a greater role in handling the XRP token. I hope XRP wins. I really do. And if they do win, I would expect a nice little pump out of Mr. Mr. Out of Mr. XRP going to get a pump here if they win the lawsuit. If they lose, it is going to be a bloodbath. Okay, I'll look at Mr. Garlinghouse and uh, the CFTC commissioner. Is that her? Caroline D. Pham? I don't know if that's her. But uh, Mr. Gary Gensler says the uh, SEC has pursued many enforcement actions against crypto products and related areas. The regulatory body labeled nine tokens as crypto asset securities falling under its purview in July complaint against a former Coinbase product manager prompting criticism from FAM at the time. Who's FAM? The timing of FAM's visit had many social media reacting CFT to the CFTT's approach to engaging with crypto firms and token projects when compared to that of the Security, uh, and Security and Exchange Commission, or SEC. On Saturday, the SEC and Ripple both filed motions for summary judgment in a case alleging the firm's XRP, the firm XRP violated securities laws. The case has been ongoing since December 2020. And what do I think? I think, in fact, <laughs> when you print your own money out of thin air, you're going to cause some trouble with the U.S. government. So probably not the best idea to be doing that. Um, anyways, that news is in and what do you know? Bitcoin magazine promotes another Colorado article. I think it's very interesting. Colorado becomes the first U S state to accept Bitcoin as payments for taxes. I wonder why they would do that. You know, Colorado, the first state to start smoking weed on the public highways, right? No, it's, it's, it's a good thing. And Colorado just became the first state to accept Bitcoin for tax payments. The governor, Jared Bolas, announced the implementation of the new payment method on Monday at Denver Startup Week, according to the report by Axios Denver. Citizens can use cryptocurrency to pay individual income tax, business income tax, sales tax, and use tax, withholding tax, severance tax, and excess fuel tax are eligible per the report. Uh, the state government's Department of Revenue now lists cryptocurrency as a payment method among 
the more well-established debit and credit cards, ACH, debit and credit, and cash. So if you think Bitcoin's going away, you might want to just take heed when the government starts taking Bitcoin as a form, in, as a form of payment for taxes, they might think it's going to be around for a little while, right? So, you know, from Warren Buffett going that Bitcoin's rat poison squared to now Colorado saying, hey, we're going to take that Bitcoin as a form of payment for taxes, I'd say it's bullish for the markets. Okay, getting on to our last segment, I'm going to try and do this in five minutes and go over. Again, when Bitcoin goes down, all the other coins get racked, and that is you know, you know what that means. I, it's like Mike Tyson said, everybody's got to get a plan. Everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Well, if Bitcoin gets punched in the face, well, some of these um, altcoins are going to get knocked out. And just a couple things I'll point out here. Ethereum in this last run up ran up 129%. Ethereum Classic ran up. Two hundred and fifty four percent. So I do imagine, right, some of these guys like Ethereum and ETH Classic are going to get absolutely smashed if Bitcoin goes to ten thousand. Just take a look, right? That that means uh we probably, you know, Ethereum Classic is gonna get really hurt. Really hurt, painfully hurt. And that means you know, we move a lot faster to the downside than we do to the upside. And I mean, that's only an 83% gain. No big deal, right? No big deal. And I'm willing to bet Ethereum Classic, uh, this is not the oldest chart. So where would, is this the March 2020? Yeah, this is March 2020 low. So down to two bucks. So from down to, so that's, that's not that much, right? You know, 100% retracement to the downside. Why does that not seem like very much? 89%? Well, that that could be pretty rough. Um, let's take a look at some of these other guys. Synthetics, which has been relatively strong. One of the stronger assets, a project I really like, long-term bullish. Already wicked down to this high right here on the weekly time frame. Holding a strong downtrend, lower highs and lower lows. So where would the next lower low be expected to come in? Any kind of a weekly closure below this guy. And I would say we got a target right here. I'm not even going to measure that out. But let's get on to it with Mr. Apecoin, which went, the apes went bananas for ApeCoin, and this could be the last pump fake for the week. This was a bearish candle, and this thing has been flying to the moon over the past just a couple of days, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, from last week, we went from 429 to 562, um, one of the better performers. And do we see a head and shoulders in place here? Not really. Um, and I would say I actually got invalidated here with this guy right here. And the weekly downtrend, what do we see? Lower highs, lower lows. And this is a slightly, I mean, we got this higher high, higher low trend reversal. If that was Bitcoin, we'd be talking another story, but altcoins do whatever Bitcoin does. And I imagine this is just a better time to get short. And this was a bit of a pump fake. I could be wrong. But um, if Bitcoin starts breaking below 17.5, I would look for a nice little retracement. And given a target down on ApeCoin would be something like this right here. Phantom, this one has been one of the worst um, one of the biggest losers here and shoot, I think we already had, yeah, we did have this target in place. I said, that's the first target at 22 already hit. And, uh, that was with any kind of a closure below 24 cents. We already made it down to 22 cents. What kind of a move was that? Not a big move. 8%. 
8%. And I do believe, yeah, we're going to come in and hit this wick here, whether you like it or not. Sorry, Mr. Phantom. Okay, so targets in place. Invalidation comes with any kind of a weekly closure back above 25 cents. Excuse me, this is the daily time frame. Sorry about that, guys. Daily time frame. Now this is the weekly chart. Look at this. Almost got the full retrace already. It's it's ready to go. It's ready to be fun. All right, Solana. Oh, everybody loves Solana. And doesn't look like we've hit this target yet. I believe that's incoming at 2741. And then any kind of a weekly closure below this wick. I got a target of, a, I'm going to move this up slightly here. Do 11 bucks. Okay. Ave has not hit its target yet. And we're going to just simply get a nice little fib retracement. And these things don't happen overnight, right? These take some time to play out. So putting a target down there. Invalidation, any kind of a weekly closure back above 109. And I'd say that got invalidated. Avalanche is literally sliding down the hill like an avalanche. And I do see a bear flag in formation here. So I'm going to draw it out and see if we get anything on the charts. Okay. Drawing this guy out. And these, again, weeks, months, years. I mean, this this very likely doesn't happen all in one swoop. But if Bitcoin gets violent, if Bitcoin gets violent, well, I would say something like this could perhaps be in the cards. That would take us down to this guy right here. At $3.92, and the full retrace would be all the way down to $0.84. Cents. That could be absolutely brutal. This does look like a double head and shoulders, and yeah, you start closing weeklies below 1040, and that that is going to be your last chance at the Mohicans right there. Um, taking a look at... Sand, how's my sand doing? Sand almost going for the full retrace here. Sand, and I'm going to give give away some portfolio ideas here in the coming weeks. I'm going to give you my portfolio for the downside. So be on the lookout for that. This is a 49 cent target. Any kind of a closure below here on the week. Um, back above 39, yeah, invalidation or even... 117. Um, otherwise, the move looks to be in fact. Volatility is cross, you know, low, cross down, and in the bearish control zone. So not looking good for Mr. San. All right, I'm running out of breath here. Let's do the last one, Mr. Cardano. We've had this one measured out. We've been calling it out for some time. Mr. Cardano, how far down can you go? 24 cents. Oh, I think she can go lower. This just looks like distribution here, right? You get the big run up, people taking profits and distributing it on the hopium dealers, the hopium people. Um, weekly closure below here. And yep, the measure move is down. I don't know where I got that. That looks a little bit lengthy here. So let's draw this out a little better and I do believe that's a little more accurate here so I'm just going to move this guy up here and then see and I believe that was the last breakdown and again you don't want to break buy the breakdown you want to buy the retest so if we get a candle down to like 38 cents right imagine it comes up retests 42 and that would be your entry Again, not financial advice, not a financial advisor, but that's how I'd be playing it if I was looking to short this guy. And I'm not. I'm not doing it at the moment. Just curious, looking at mana, and maybe we had this drawn out wrong, and it does look like we are on the brinks of a breakdown. So again, we broke the trend line. 
We retested and now we're coming back down and I would expect this wick to get hit and really um, we could draw it from more like here to get a target. Mr. Mana, Mr. Sandman. Is this the COVID low? June 21. No, it's not. So this is not the oldest chart. But I will put a target on Mr. Mana here at 53 cents. And uh, probably gets a bounce off the wick because it is lining up with these wicks deck here. But mana and, oh, XRP, last one. Volatility is expand. Whoa, did we get some news? Is this, is this SEC chairman thing double bottoming this asset out? Look at that double bottom. Oh, I don't think that's the case. I think we're just getting a last test of the top side of the range and breakdown incoming. But yeah, any kind of a weekly closure you know, above this guy right here. And I'm going to say probably going to get a little lift off. So there's the weekly range right here. Um, however, just be careful. Volatility is not fully expanded yet. You want to see it above 20 percentile. That typically gets the move. And what about on the day? Do we have any bearish divergence forming? Oh, multiple drives. So if this does confirm as a local high, I would expect at least a move back down to the bottom side of the range. So daily closure below 36 cents. And I'm looking for the bottom side of the range to get tagged. And yeah, there are several drive of hidden bullish divergence, which this is going to be a major pivot on the market to the upside and to the downside. And I would suspect Ripple to do whatever Bitcoin does. So a break to the upside is going to give you this move to the downside. Excuse me, a break to the downside. And a break to the upside, 1618. I mean, it could really get going here. Volatility is expanding on the two-day. We're crossed up. Everything's crossed up. We'll cross down below 37 cents. So that would be a good one to keep your eyes on. And... Um, yeah, I'm glad I'm taking a look across the galaxy here in crypto land so I can reveal some of my portfolio that looks like, um, you know, I see all these other YouTubes out there. They're like, buy these altcoins. They might got the best chance for hope. And I'm going to put out a short list on what I think is probably one of the only one <laughs> One of the only ways you can make money in a bear market, and I'm going to put my portfolio up against some of those big channels out there that are talking about their Solana, Matic, and XRP, and Cardano bags they're holding on to till they die, and I'm going to see, um, see if we can beat their portfolio, and uh, you know, we'll track the performance over the, next, over the following 30 days. Maybe I'll do that at the end of September. Or maybe I'll do it in the next day or two. So be on the lookout for that. Um, that's it for today, guys. Long video. Hope you have a blessed and highly favored day. Make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content today. And you want to learn how to trade some cryptocurrencies. We've got, again, free uh, tutorials and um, daily analysis. Take care.